Here now, JunkScience.com publisher and a former member of President Trump's EPA transition team, Steve Malloy. Uh, Al Gore is the big root, big giant rotting root of the problem. That he's the one, like, that has scared literally generations of kids into mental health problems thinking that the world's coming to an end. Well, Dagan, thanks for having me. Yes, Al Gore is the root of all climate insanity. He's the one that started calling it a climate crisis. That comment he made in that clip you played about the 600,000 atomic bombs every day, I've done the math since Al Gore has been using that line. Supposedly 2 billion atomic bombs have gone off in the atmosphere, yet we are still here. Um, look, Joe Biden has glommed on to this language. Joe Biden said this fall that, um, you know, the itty bitty global warming that we're experiencing right now is worse than nuclear war. I mean, these people are just totally crazy. They are scaring the bejeebers out of people that don't know any better and that for some reason trust them. Um, the U.N. climate chief uh, this summer uh, was talking about, you know, how we've moved um, away from global warming and into the era of global boiling. They're just trying to scare people, and, and it's working with a lot of people. Last year, a man committed suicide on the steps of the Supreme Court because he believed Al Gore. Um, you know, trial lawyers should have a field day with this. This is intentional infliction of emotional distress. This is an actionable tort, and I hope one day we have some sort of reckoning. And Al Gore's gotten incredibly wealthy on the back of climate change, no doubt. But uh, according to Al, there's only 24, 24 hours left to prevent COP28 from being the most embarrassing and dismal failure in 28 years. Quote, there are 24 hours left to show whose side the world is on, the side that wants to protect humanity's future by kickstarting the orderly phase out of fossil fuels or the side of the petrostates and the leaders of the oil and gas companies. Um, this, is my, this is my concern. These, these leaders go over for COP28 um, or they go to the World Economic Forum and they promote these ideas. But when, do the, when does democracy actually work? When do we actually, Steve, get to actually vote on these issues? Uh, an America or a world without fossil fuels, that is pretty bleak. I think we should have a vote on it. But they just make the rules and they in, in, impose them on us and we don't get a say. <laughs> That's absolutely right, Sean. The um, the Paris Climate Treaty that Obama signed and started treating like a treaty, uh, President Trump took us out of it. Joe Biden put us back in it. It's an illegal treaty. Uh, they call it an executive agreement. It's actually a treaty, and it's illegal. We're never. No one's ever gotten a chance to vote on any of this stuff. Um, you know, Bill Clinton kept the Kyoto Protocol out of the Senate. Obama and Biden have done the same thing with the Paris Climate Protocol. Just you know, the the key issue right now at COP28 is this language about phasing out fossil fuels. Um, the president of the conference, who's also the CEO of the Abu Dhabi National Oil Company. <laughs> <laughs> um, he he in a, in a Zoom call before the conference, he told uh, Mary Robinson, the former uh, president of Ireland and now a full time climate bedwetter. He told her, he said he, he begged with her. He said, please, ma'am, please, let's be real, be realistic, because uh, we're not get, we're not going to get away from fossil fuels. Everything that happens in our society depends on fossil fuels. He pleaded with her, just be realistic. You know, and if you really want to get rid of fossil fuels, show us the way. You know, Ireland only has five million people. And if we were to take away fossil fuels from Ireland, it would just turn into a giant graveyard. Um, so it's not possible yet. You know, Al Gore and all these crazy people insist on trying to move us away from fossil fuels. It's not possible. It would it would destroy civilization. I'll just note that Steve Moore wrote this. President Biden just pledged to shut down 60 percent of America's electric power at COP28, stopping production of all new coal plants and then phasing out. Uh, methane or like targeting methane, which is a product of natural gas, which is a de facto ban on natural gas power plants. So look out for brownouts and blackouts in the United States because that's what they're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Joe Biden has used EPA to propose exactly what you're talking about. They're going to finalize it. It's totally unconstitutional. Congress has never allowed 
has never authorized EPA to shut down uh, fossil fuel plants. So the Supreme Court will, you know, undoubtedly trash this rule when it comes out. However, much damage will be done in the meantime. Obama did a similar thing, right. killed 50,000 high paying coal jobs in coal communities. It was illegal. But by the time the Supreme Court got around to it, the damage had been done. No doubt. Steve Malloy, I was a pleasure. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. I think it would be great if we have one state do it, one country do it. Let's see how it turns out. No fossil fuels in California, just California. No fossil fuels in Ireland. And let's see how it goes, and we'll all make decisions from there. Let's saw California off and push it into the Pacific. I agree, all right. Just watch it. <laughs> see how that goes. Put away.